Hey everybody, it's Norm from Test. I'm here at Monster Palooza 2016, and I had to stop by Adam Bean Industries. This is Adam Bean, and you and Alex worked together on CX-5, something you created. Yeah. Uh, explain CX-5, what is it as a sculpting material? Okay, so CX-5 is a unique kind of sculpting material. It starts off hard, like plastic, at room temperature, and then you warm it up and work with it, and it's soft, like a really nice bodied clay and then it becomes cool again. So that interplay between the hot and the cold is sort of the magic where it lives. You can go back in with hot tools and continue to uh, rework it over and over. Over and over, and that's an important thing. It's adding heat at the right temperature, not too hot. It means you can sculpt it, but then when it solidifies, it's just like plastic, that's a finished product? Calling it plastic isn't quite accurate. I mean, it's, it's an all natural material, it's non-toxic. Um, so when people think of plastics, they tend to think of things that come from the uh, petrochemical uh, industry and this stuff does not. And that was something that was really important to us is to create a green material that was responsibly sourced. It's manufactured here in Los Angeles. Um, and you know, a lot of people here in the special effects industry and in the game industry use it. And a new use for it is something you guys have been developing for a little bit while now. Yeah. It's the first time we get to see it in person, but there's a 3D printer here, and that leads me to believe this can actually be used in a printer? How does that work? Yeah, so this material is almost exactly like CX-5 that people are used to sculpting in. However, we've developed it in a filament form. And you can print just like you would on any other FDM printer with any other filament and get a printout that you can go right into and detail and start sculpting with as though you had started it from scratch with your hands. And it comes out and you can basically get rid of print lines, you can model something in the computer and then have a base for you to, to work with as a, as a template. Um, now in terms of filaments, is it closer to PLA or ABS? And what's the, what's the heating temperature? So it's very, very low melt material. So we're talking 75, seven, or about 75 degrees centigrade. So considerably lower than PLA. So it, it works on any um, FDM printer in which you can turn the temperature down. There are a couple that you can't control the temperature. So normal PLA is about 230, 250 degrees. So that's a much, much lower temperature, which means you don't need a heated build plate. You can print right onto any kind of normal cold build plate. Now, what's the process for you developing the filament? Because with this type of material, with it not being like PLA or ABS, you know, how do you get it to actually lay on the platform and, and not, not clump up as you're printing? It, it, it just doesn't yeah, clump so up. It doesn't have, yeah, we, we have some, uh, some, some prints that were started. Um, to show the different uh, infill and all that, the wall thicknesses, and, and you know the fidelity is fantastic. But look, this is how this is how it adheres to regular masking tape, regular blue painters tape, actually on the base. So you can get a very very clean um, base level there without actually needing to do any heated or, or it doesn't curl up like anything else because it's not going to cool as quickly. Anything that's super hot when you get it on a cold surface will do that curling up situation. CX5 won't do that. Do you have the same uh, layer thickness uh, options as you would with yes. other? Yeah, and we're using multiple different ones. We're experimenting. We like to do larger build, uh, like larger steps, because we're already going to go in and do all the detail afterwards. So there's no need to print it super, super detailed. You're going to do that work after the print comes out. But you have all the normal options you have with any other material. And that, it, it's, you used a little bit earlier, you said something really interesting. You said um, that, that I believe you said that's the beginning form that you pull off the printer. And that's a really interesting thing that you said because most people think that the 3D printer is the end. That's the final result. And at that point, you either have to use a solvent. Some of them are really toxic. You have to use a solvent or uh, what everybody refers to as uh, auto body, auto shopping it. Right, body filler, right? You have two options, right? If you have, you can either, you know, heat up your acetone and it smooths it out, but then you lose detail and you can't control it. Or if you add body filler, you're also also losing detail. Can't be as fine. How fine can you work with the CX-5 in a print? Like, what can you do with it? Well, you can get the same level of fidelity that the FDM printer is capable of with any of the other plastics but you still have those same the striations, the build lines, but you can instantly get rid of them using a variety of sculpting techniques, using hot sculpting tools, using very, very, very innocuous solvents like D-limonene, um, which is like basically a food safe solvent. You can instantly smooth it out. 
And then any of the extra CX-5, like build platforms, can that just be reused and re-sculpted? Oh. Yeah, we're actually going to offer a recycling program. You can reuse it on your own print, but if you have extras or things that didn't work right, you can send it back to us and we're going to recycle that and give credit for new purchases of filament. That way it keeps getting reused and we don't have to just throw away extra material. But yeah, you could also squish it up and use it as material to just add on to your print. Right. Yeah. One of the things that, that um, when I developed the initial sculpting material, so that's CX-5 and CX-5S, that I was trying to accomplish with that, it took an iterative process that usually uses a waste mold made of silicone rubber and removes that whole step. So that's like, for one sculptor in a year, one um, commercial sculptor in a year, that's literally thousands of pounds of rubber that's not going into landfill. So that was one of my goals, is to reduce waste. And that's also one of our goals here with the recycling program, is to reduce waste. Like, this is really high tech, all natural material. It would be a shame to just throw that in the dumpster, you know? And this is super exciting. We've been hearing whisperings about it for a while. I know you've been developing it for a while. So what's the next step? You guys are launching a Kickstarter to finalize it as a product? Yeah, we're going to be launching a Kickstarter this May, mid-May. Um, and we're trying to raise funds because now we've done product development a number of times. We have uh, three products out there and we know what it takes to build the production line and do all, you know, like, all the different parts, the MSDS, all of that stuff. So we need to raise money to to meet the de the anticipated demand, which I think uh, is <laughs> what we're hearing. It's going to be huge. So we're super excited to test out in our own labs. Thank you so much, Alexis. Thank you, Adam. It's great to see Thank you guys you. in Monster Palooza, and we'll check it out. All right, fantastic.